Hello, Dr. Cisse covering anatomy and physiology. Today we'll talk about scientific methods. In this class, we'll be conducting experiments. It'll be very important for you to know how do you conduct an experiment? Where do you start? How do you know you're following scientific methods? We'll talk about before science, what people used to do. A little historical review of science. The difference between inductive method and hypothetical deductive method. What is the scientific method? What are the steps? What are the planning? What is, how do you do a design? Why do you need a peer review? What is defined as fact or law or theory? Before science, patients used to be treated by doctors who use herbs, salt, physical therapy, and magic spell because they thought those diseases were caused by gods or evil spirits. By the fifth century, they had doctors who specialized in specific type of medicine based on those assumptions. For example, they thought that you think with your heart. And physicians actually wrote prescriptions based on those assumptions. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. So it was like a guessing game, haphazard. So that is not scientific. So what made it scientific? Francis Bacon, an English scientist, philosopher, and Rene Descartes from France, both were philosophers who thought about new ways of scientific thinking, right? They thought about a very creative and objective process that we can follow to show evidence that something is working or not, instead of just guessing. So they did it based on observation they made on other people made on similarity how people things look like or how they're different in and how they follow trend in nature so that they can draw useful a conclusion based on those observation they're even able to convince their governments to establish academies of science and set standard for truth meaning they had standard that everybody need to follow to show that this is scientific, like a way of doing things. It's not like they invented something, they just show a new way of doing things so that we all can agree that this is how we're gonna conduct something to call it scientific. That's why we need to explain what is the inductive method. Now, if I ask you, where is your heart located? Or where is your brain located? You know, you know that my heart is in my chest, behind my breastbone. My brain is in my head. How do you know that? Did you open your head to look at it? No, you didn't. You base your prediction, your assumption on prior observation by other people that were repeated so many times it became your reality. It means that we can deduct things, we can conclude things, not because we've seen or we just open our head and look at it, because we know scientists look at the many bodies before and find out that the brain is in the head. That's why you assume your brain is your head. That's called inductive method. So it is reliable observation that you look at it carefully, repeatedly confirm. You gotta confirm so many times. But we say something is true today, it doesn't mean it'll be true tomorrow. It could be wrong tomorrow because somebody has the evidence to prove it wrong. That's why we say true is never, abs never absolute. Truth is never absolute. You have to say it is true beyond a reasonable doubt. But at the same time, we have to think about dogma. We shouldn't just accept the thing the way they are because they are, like somebody says so. We have to verify it. Now, if we know the inductive method, what about the hypothetical deductive method? What is the deductive method? In the deductive method, we have to formulate a hypothesis, an educated guess based on prior knowledge. Most physiology knowledge is gained by this method. We have to formulate hypothesis, and then the good hypothesis will be consistent with what is already known uh, and are testable. Testable means you can test it, you can, you can check it and see if it's wrong or right. But what is a wrong, what is a right? If, if something is scientifically truth, if you cannot verify the opposite of it, you cannot prove it's wrong, then it is not true. That's called falsifiability. If something is scientifically true, we must be able to specify what evidence it would take to prove it wrong. Do we have an evidence? 
let's say we take example of egg experiment. We put the egg in the solution. We say, if we put an egg in a solution that's very concentrated, highly concentrated, the shell, the cell will shrink, right? In that case, if we make the solution less concentrated, the cell will not shrink. So we have to be able to have evidence to, to show the opposite of it. So let's talk about scientific method. What is the scientific method? You always start with what an observation. You have to look at something, see it, feel it, hear it, use it or sense organ, right? Or instrument or communication with the other researchers. Somebody told us that it happened. Then we formulate an hypothesis, educated the guess, a possible answer to the question. Then we make a prediction based on that hypothesis. Then we design an experiment to see if the prediction matches the hypothesis, right? So we match a test group with a control group, for example. We give a medicine to one group, we give placebo to the other group, and we see if the medicine works or not. Now, how do we conclude? If the data support the hypothesis, our prediction got confirmed. But if the data does not support the hypothesis, then it's not confirmed. So what are the steps? How do you do that? First, you make an observation. You look at something. Then you make hypothesis. You formulate hypothesis. You say, if the egg is in the solution, if the solution is very concentrated, water will be moving out, the egg will shrink. If the solution is less concentrated, water will be moving in, the egg will get bigger. That's going to be hypothesis. But is that going to happen or not? How do you know? So you make a prediction based on the hypothesis, but you cannot confirm it until you conduct what? An experiment, or you make a new observation. Then you make another hypothesis to see if your hypothesis, if the results are consistent over many experiments based on many related hypotheses, then the hypothesis become what? A theory. How do you plan experiment? First, you ask yourself, what am I looking for? What shall I measure? What do I measure? How do I measure it? What effects should I watch for and which ones should, should I ignore? How can I be sure my results are due to the variable that I manipulate and not due to something else? How do you know that? When working with a human subject, how can I prevent the subject's expectation or state of mind from influencing the result? How can I eliminate my own bias? And be sure that even the most skeptical critical will have as much confidence in my conclusion as I do. If in our egg experiment, for example, what am I looking for? I'm looking for movement of water from low to high concentration in osmosis. What shall I measure? I will measure the change in a way. How do I measure it? By using a scale. If I'm measuring the size by measure tape measure, I'm using something. What effects should I watch for and which one should I ignore? I will, should look at the change in a way. That's it. So how do I make sure my results are due to the variable that I'm manipulating? By just making one difference between everything, the concentration of the solution. The water will be the same, the same type of egg, the same type of beaker, everything will be the same, but the concentration. That's how you know. The sample size. If you experiment on design, you have to know how many people, how many subjects you're going to be having. In our egg experiment, you have to have a minimum number of eggs. Let's say you have two eggs or four eggs for each solution. Control, you have to have somebody, a subject, uh, uh, who did not get a treatment. That's going to be a control to compare with the one with the treatment. What about psychomatic effect? For example, if it's a medicine, somebody can have a result because the psychological thinks some kind of way. For example, if you take the vaccine, the COVID vaccine going on right now, you see that some people are skeptical. So even if you give them the vaccine, their state of mind may have, may cause them to have some kind of reactive, uh, uh, may have some reaction to the medicine that is due to their own state of mind. Okay? So that's why when we do control group, we give them placebo, which is a medicine that's not, it's a fake medicine. So what, how do you avoid experimental bias? You have to avoid it with double blind study. You don't know the medicine. If you conduct the experiment, you give to a doctor, you give to your patient, they don't know which medicine is which one. What about, what about peer review? Critical evaluation by other experts in the field. No matter what kind of research you do, you're going to have somebody who will test your experiment, who will read your paper to make sure it was done well. So they, they can give you a critique. Why do you need to do that? To ensure honesty, objectivity, and quality in science. 
Now let's define facts, laws, and theory. What is the scientific fact? It's the information that can be independently verified. If I do it, it work. You should do it, it should work. What about law of nature? It's a generalization about the way matter energy behave. Things will behave naturally. Water will flow, air will flow, there's pressure, the sun. Things are naturally happen in nature. Things that happen in nature. So those will have from results from inductive reasoning and repeated observation. We talk about inductive because things happen naturally. Your heart is in your chest. Your brain is in the head. You know, water will flow. Air will flow. Something like that. Those are law of nature. So they can be also formula in math, for example. A theory, like we said, is an explanatory statement or set of statements derived from facts, laws, and confirmed hypotheses. If we do something many times, we find the same result by different people, it becomes a theory. So now we talk about scientific method. To conclude, what is the scientific method? It is an assumption and a method that yields reliable, objective, testable information about nature. Because everything we do is in nature. So we can rely on it. It is objective. We can see it. We can test it. And we can see the result. That makes it a scientific method. So in this case, in order for you to have an experiment that will be approved as a scientifically done, you have to use these steps. You have to have a hypothesis. You have to predict it. You have to conduct an experiment. At the result, you have to use statistics to check your data. And the conclusion, you have to say, does it confirm your hypothesis or it goes, it doesn't confirm your hypothesis. In this case, we can say you conducted an experiment using scientific method. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.